So tell me about this meeting, dude. They have a, like a black students like association meeting, or I guess they're trying to start one or something. So go check that out. Get some unity on this white ass ship, you know? Uh, damn. Ain't nothing but white people on this ship. Okay, let's see. Let's introduce ourselves. My name is uh, Reverend Edward Scott, and I'm really excited by the prospect of meeting all of you and going to South Africa for the first time after the end of apartheid. Oh, I'm so really excited about that. As much as I'm excited to go there in general, you know, I think it's still that element of fear, like, what am I going to see, you know? A colleague of ours who has done this journey twice suggested that we meet with black students in advance of actually landing in South Africa because when they arrived in South Africa, were very, very disturbed by what they saw. Very disturbed. Only seven years ago, apartheid in South Africa was the law of the land. That meant whites had all the control and blacks had nothing. If they protested, they were beaten, tortured, and thrown in prison. They had no vote, no money, no say in their future, all because of the color of their skin. Remember, the slave trade extended down the coast of Africa, okay? And since that, as you travel back to the continent... You don't have chains. At least you don't have any on your wrists and your legs. And for all of us who are going back, this is a powerfully liberating kind of experience, potentially. In tribute to my mother and my ancestors, those who lived through slavery on up to the civil rights movement. I'm on this voyage for them, so I have to take this voyage seriously. Read as much as you can. Keep focused. Don't be about any boy. You cannot take this lightly. Focus, you, focus, girl. focus, focus. You going home? You going to Africa? The only knowledge that I have of Cape Town is basically apartheid, but really I don't know that much about that either. I didn't even know how to say it until they told me. Just think of apart, like being apart, and hate. Apartheid. Apartheid. Good evening. We're going to kick things off with a few South African songs. I don't feel that I have to represent for black people. If I did that, it'd be sort of proving myself to be like a good black person. And that's both because, you know, black, white, yellow, red, whatever, we're all gonna end up in the same ground. We all bleed blood that's red. I wanted to ask, what is the perception of African Americans of most South Africans? Well, to be honest, South African, black South Africans um, struggle a bit with African Americans calling themselves African Americans. Since when they weren't born in Africa, and Africa and culture is not their culture. I'm blown away by the statement that I can't call myself African American just because I wasn't born on the continent of Africa. I mean, that, that really hurts me, you know? Purple, purple turtle place upstairs. Oh, I got my nipples. 
Christmas trees in South Africa! Look at that mountain. We're on our way to our mission, and we have no idea what it is. South Africa. Damn. This is the place where a black man named Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for 27 years, resisting the white and apartheid government. Then he became president of the whole country. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Mr. Daniels, I'm honored to meet you all. I've been asked to introduce you in some small way to my personal experience in South Africa. Eddie Daniels was in prison at Robben Island for 15 years for acts of sabotage against apartheid. This is where he met Mandela. Now this is the area where we used to be beaten and tortured. We were not allowed newspapers or radios. One day they found a little radio battery in the other sections of the prison and uh, they raided all the prisons and they brought people in here and they put them in stray jackets and they beat them, jumped on them. We could hear the screams. So this was a kind of a torture chamber. When you're in jail, you hit rock bottom. And uh, to survive depends on, on your inner strength, depends on the people you are with. Now, Mr. Mandela, through example, he inspired us that we survive. So Mr. Mandela spent 18 years in this section. Mr. Mandela's cell was number five. 18 years in this one? Yeah. 18 years is almost my whole life. How can anybody live like that for so long? Mandela was released from jail. He was confronted with thousands of people screaming and wanting to touch him. But our president is a great man. We are proud of him. And he had taught us how to reconcile and try to live with our former enemies. We are now trying to build up our country as one nation, South Africa. Robin Island has reminded me that, again, there are people that have gone through worse, you know? It's a tap on the shoulder for me. I know you're on an assignment. You are going to stay with some families. Like one, family. one is the Afrikaner family, the other white. Then there's the black African family. And then there's the Muslim family, which were considered colored. Muslim. So you divide yourself into twos? Well, is there yeah. this is a big thing for both, for both of you? Both of you, yeah. yeah. So I want you guys to have your first choice. What family do you want to go with? And I want to go with the African family. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I think, yeah, I think I want to go with the Afrikaner family. Afrikaner? I can call you. Alright, so it's me. Yeah. Afrikaners are the white people who used to be in control of blacks in South Africa. I'm choosing to stay with a white family because it's my only chance to check something like this out. I have a happy journey. I'm very nervous. I'm anticipating a lot because I just don't know what to expect. Nervous. Well, I can't wait nervous? to meet these people. Why are you nervous? Because, like, I, I got off, like, just, like, heart was beating fast and stuff. It's starting to hit me. Like, oh, my God. Like, uh, all right, y'all. We in South Africa. Love the show! Oh, here it is. On the ships. This is going to be amazing. I am a hell of excited. Let me introduce you. This is my sister. This is my sister's baby. So gorgeous. Hello. Hi, I'm Yes. Nice to meet you. This is the mother of the house. My mom. 
You're welcome to the house. Oh, thank you so much. Let me take your bag so that you, you feel welcome. How are you guys doing? Good, I'm Veronica. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Nice to meet you. See you tomorrow, Yeah. 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 I'm nervous. I'm nervous, yeah. All right, so we're here. I think that's a no go. I got your back. I don't think the door will work. Knock. You, I press it. You press it again. So if they ask me, I press it the second time. You know. <laughs> I'm walking into a house where no black man has ever walked before. Hi, you, Hi. Hi, Sean. I'm Paul. Hi, Hello. great there. Come inside, come inside. Oh, you guys, go inside. Sit down. Anywhere, just sit down. How are you doing? I'm Louis. Paul. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you, man. And welcome in our home. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's amazing to be here. Yeah. Uh, I think I speak for both of us when I say, like, we're extremely happy to be here. Thank you. Small. It's got a small house. It's not big, but it's nice. with a whole lot of rooms and the toilet that flushes and a shower that gets warm and pours over your head. And I know that Langa is a whole different story. You're going to go with that tool. Yes. This is where it happened. They came. Here? Yeah. This is where many people were killed. School children were killed. Yeah. And then they were buried somewhere. They police. Yeah. Big hole. Big hole. Mm -hmm. And then they threw them in. So they were buried in that big hole. Something that you hear from your parents and then you experience it yourself. In 1986, I just started high school. There was like that friction between the government and the students and we're not allowed to go to school. So there was a big meeting at school and then the police came in beating everybody. There were helicopters like flying over the school and we were like crawling out. I remember my, and my school uniform was torn. Regardless if you are a teacher, school children or whatever, you were beaten up. The squatters, where people like build their own shacks. And so it's there. like they don't pay rent. No, they like, don't. They just stay there because they do not no they don't have for enemies. No. So anything could happen. They, you know, mm -hmm. it's not safe for them to have shacks. But because people don't have any place to stay, they just build the shacks wherever they found space. <laughs> You can't live without water. You can't live without light. You can't live with, with, without toilets. Yeah, it's the number one that they can't allow. My friend, if you haven't got nothing, what are you going to do? Nothing. But we're we going to vote. And I will vote. No matter I'm struggling like this. You know, my father was in Robben Island, so now I'm struggling a long time. I was so little kid. Make me my heart very sore. I am struggling now. Oh, it's 
kind of frustration because everywhere we go, it seems as if people like me, people that look like me, are being put in a position where they have to struggle, and it just doesn't seem fair. this into a presentation for everyone on the ship. How do we put these feelings into words? You'll find a lot of black people in the townships they actually hate white people. You understand where they're coming from. Oh, right? yes. yes, yes. So they mean this, um... <laughs> I'm supposed to get to know these people, but I'm nervous and I don't know why. It's gonna be a lot tougher than I thought. Okay, and let's can we close our eyes? Yeah, I'll give a prayer. Just a little one. We're serving you African food. This is the one who's on it. This is sand and beans. We call it um, cool. and turkey. It smells good. I'm so hungry. <laughs> so, this is very good. <laughs> Tastes so much like, I mean, I, my mom made the red beans and rice, you know? Yeah. Because it's like, like the dog up there, my Aunt Betty Jo has a dog, except for hers, is orange. <laughs> Just like that in the living room. I mean, because it's like, I have ancestors that I will never, ever know, that I know their blood runs through my veins. Mm -hmm. And their hope that one day they could ever see this continent again. Mm -hmm. In a sense, I'm bringing that with me, and I brought them home. Yeah. You know, mm. I'm so far removed from this continent, so far, but yet and still it's so close. Just in the small things that we do, like um, my, my mother braids hair, you know? Okay. And her mother taught her how to braid hair, and her mother taught her how to braid hair. You know, that's not an American thing, knowing how to braid it. Going no, out of corn it's, an that's not a, it's an African thing. You yeah. Know? So, that means you come from here. Most definitely. Yeah. And I was a little scared, too, because... On the ship on the way here, we had an Interport student who basically told all the African Americans on the ship that we weren't African. So we had no right to call ourselves African Americans because we oh, were not African. That. It really hurt a lot of us. So I was, I was a little you scared. You could have told her to sh just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because if we take off that African part, we are totally denying our grandmothers, yeah. Yeah. our mothers, yeah. our great-grandmothers. You belong here. Mm. Being in this township is showing me how interconnected and interdependent we are in this world because there's a huge part of me that didn't, didn't think that we were going to be so similar. And I was surprised, at my surprise, you know, I've been told that a lot of things are the same, but until I saw it from my own eyes, I had to realize that there are a lot of preconceptions that I have as well. Ma, it's Ziana. Guess where I'm at, Ma? Yes, I'm in South Africa, Ma. I'm staying in African Township, and Ma, I'm so at home. I had some red beans and rice and potatoes. Man, it was so good, and everybody's so nice here. And Ma, it's, it's so much just like home. I mean, like the way people dress, the way the houses are, it feels like just, I am like I'm at home. And Ma, woo.